listeners, and welcome back to the Internet Marketing and Business Solutions Radio Show with Ron Coming of RCS Online Solutions, where we help business owners and entrepreneurs, much like you, attract, convert, and retain their ideal customers and clients to achieve even greater success. The purpose of this show is I, I basically break it up into two different formats, uh, depending upon whether or not I have guests or not that week. Most of the time, I'll have one guest, segment one, and then a uh, second one in segment two, or I'll just give out uh, tips and methods to help you with your online marketing to attract uh, the customers and clients that businesses need. I mean, at the end of the day, cash is the... Uh, is oxygen to a business, right? Today, uh, we have no guests, so I'm going to give you two segments, about 30 minutes long each, 25 minutes or so each, and uh, to help you learn about uh, SEO and different uh, video marketing. The first section, I'm going to talk about seven hot SEO tips and tricks for blogs. So if you're putting up blogs or you're a blogger, uh, we're going to talk about ways that you can maximize your exposure on them. And uh, the more people that see it, the more people that might be able to uh, hire you, right, consider you or follow you. Uh, and then the second one, I'm going to talk to you about a guide on video marketing. I'm going to give you uh, several uh, methods that you can maximize your videos uh, because videos is massive. Uh, video is, uh, you know, by 2020, 2021, approximately 70% of all searches are going to return a result in video format. So uh, video is taking over the written blog. Blogs will still be there, of course, but uh, video will have first priority. And, and sometimes I, I'll create a video, but it'll just be a lead into my blog. So I get the benefits of having the video being pulled up, and then they can also read the blog. So the video might just be 30 seconds as an intro to what the blog contains, but Anyhow, that's in se uh, section two, and I'm going to talk to you about uh, it's a guide to video marketing and SEO. So today in this section, I want to talk to you about seven hot tips for uh, seven hot SEO tips and tricks for blogs and blogging. Uh, so if you're, I'm just basically going to cut into the the, the tips. Okay, uh, I, I have written some material and. Uh, Sometimes I like to read from that material and then ad lib as uh, as I go on, so I kind of stay on topic and stay focused. All right, so some of it's going to sound like I'm reading because I am, and then after I make a point, I uh, will uh, maybe bring in a story or two to kind of bring it home. Okay, so uh, first I want to let you know that you know whatever you're doing for your SEO, your search engine optimization today. It's constantly changing. You know, Google is constantly changing their algorithms to kind of like reset the clock. They'll come out with a set of guidelines or rules that nobody actually knows. You know, it's all code and numbers, and it's an algorithm, right? It's not like people are sitting there and pulling up your website and deciding what to do upon that. There's a whole bunch of criteria in the background that just adds, like, points and you know, it's for lack of a better term, it's just like points, and the higher your points are, the more that uh, you'll come up higher in the ranks. So uh, you, you got to my, – my biggest thing that I want to tell you is to just keep doing the basics. If you stick with the basics, the fundamental basics of, of all appropriate pure white hat, meaning no – you're not doing any uh, scammy or spammy type of activities, no matter what changes Google come out with, it's not going to hurt you. In fact, it will help you because what it, when they come out with their major changes, it, all those people who got ranked because they were doing scammy and spammy stuff, they get spanked and set back, and you either stay the same or you now move up because you did what you were supposed to do the right way. I tell my clients when we do their SEO, we, we do everything from websites, social media, email marketing, SEO. I have a full team of 26, but um, I tell my clients I love it when Google comes out with their changes because it just, my clients, like I said, most if not all of them pop right up. They actually go higher up uh, the next day and the other people are going backwards or they're not even on the first page anymore. 
So I'm going to give you seven tips, and, and, and I'd like to hear from you if you have any others. I mean, feel free uh, to call me at 978-606-5432, or you can email me at ron at rcsonlinesolutions.com to let me know your thoughts, your ideas about these tips and anything else that you hear. This show has been on the air for almost three years now, and uh I have all these videos, just so you know, these videos and all videos are archived, so you can go back and listen uh, and uh, re-listen uh, and write down if, if you're driving and you can't write things down on my website, rcsonlinesolutions.com, as well as WCAP 980 AM's radio station, uh, their website as well, on up in the archives on their uh, website, so... Plenty of time to go back. I mean, there's probably almost three or 400 videos uh, up on YouTube of uh, this as well. They're clips, and then I just load them up. So it's all audio, so there's no actual video. But anyhow, so let me get into the seven tips now. So here are the seven tips and tricks, but I, I kind of hesitate to use the word trick because it's these are legitimate things. That, and, again, if you stick to the white hat techniques, uh, you, you, you're going to do a lot better than most people for a couple of reasons. One, most people don't even do SEO. They've been spoon-fed that it doesn't work or they, they tried something or, and, or they hired the wrong person and it didn't work for them. But believe me, it worked when done right. So uh, internal linking, that's one thing. And we're going to talk about blogs. These tips are, are for bloggers and, and but keep in mind that these are also tips that will help your website as well, okay? So tip number one, we're going to talk about internal link building. Do you, do you do enough linking of old content to new content? Leaking, uh, linking old and new content is like creating a paper trail for Google. So let's say you write a blog and your blog is... 500 words, 1,000 words, whatever it is. But in there, you talk about something that you have talked about previously. By linking to that blog article, just by, you know, highlight one or two words or three words, whatever it is, and then creating a hyperlink to the previous article you've written, um, that creates an internal leak, a link inside your website, which is great because when the search engine's go out and their bots go out, it comes down, you know, it, it, it comes from the top to the bottom, and when it gets to that, it's another link, and it goes and uh, to the other page and then ends up coming back. And But, it, you know, it means that they're indexed and they're on your page longer, and it's just uh, very beneficial for you. But uh, it also allows people to maybe get a little more deeper information. So if you're giving an article on something and then you mention something else as that, like say it supports whatever your current article is about, uh, maybe like a prerequisite or something that could work in conjunction with it, by linking to that blog article, they can then link to it, read it, and come back and get even more benefits and value from your current piece. So linking new con uh, content to old content. When you write content on your website, Find relevant articles that you have already published on your site to link to. As the value of the new post goes up, the value of the link goes up as well because you have direct hits and then you have link juice. So maybe uh, I'll do another episode totally on link juice, and that's my link, okay? I'll create a link to these two articles, okay? Uh, so that's a great example. Um, also, if anyone does uh, copy or republish your content, then at least you'll have uh, at least one link back to your site. So now, let's say you link inside your article to one of your other articles. Somebody shares your current article. You will have a link to that article and then link choose to the other article as well, right, if not a, uh, another link. To find relative uh, articles to link Go to Google and search your site for relevant articles. For example, I wanted to find relevant articles about SEO on this site. I would type in the following, SEO site, uh, rcsonlinesolutions.com. Linking old content to new content. It's, it's great to link to older articles, but what about linking older articles to your new content? 
So now if you've already written articles previously and you didn't do linking, go back and, and you can do that. It's just as, this is just as important to consider. You have some old articles that Google has probably already indexed, and if it's a good article, you'll have some links to it. This means the value has gone up, right? If people are liking, sharing, linking to it, mentioning it, Google views that as like votes of confidence and gives you uh, more credit, at least that particular piece. Uh, so you can now link from these older articles to your new posts or from your new posts to your older articles. This gives your new article a little boost, and it also helps Google find it. As Google is re-indexing your content, it will follow links within your post. So here's the action for you, okay? Revisit your older posts and find posts you should be cross-linking. Consider adding this as an additional item for your checklist for new posts. So when you create a new post, Check to see if you've written, if anything inside your new post, you have an article that supports that, works with it. Maybe it's a prerequisite or it's a, an article that will more define something or a concept that you're talking about uh, but wasn't appropriate for you to, you know, have two or three articles inside your account blog linked to it, Okay. So that's number one. Uh, so tip number one, and like I said, we have seven here, uh, internal link building. That's huge, okay? Uh, tip number two, this is kind of important as well. I shouldn't say kind of. It is. Uh, re resolve errors in Google Webmaster tools. Imagine if Google crawled your site, and when it found any issues or problems, it told you about them. Hey, guys, I just found a problem on your site, and if you don't fix them, it will mean that I'm not going to be able to send you as much traffic as I was going to. And, of course, you're not going to get that personal email from Google, but Google does put any error or problems. I have an example in front of me, but, you know, you're not going to basically be able to see it. But if you go to Webmaster Tools, which uh, you should if they have Google Analytics. I mean, this stuff is free, right? So go to your Google uh, Webmaster Tools, and then on the left-hand side, you'll see Dashboard, uh, Site Messages, Search Appearance, uh, HTML Improvements, and just click through them because uh, the one I'm looking at right now will say HTML Improvements and uh, Duplicate Meta Descriptions and it will tell you uh, on five different pages, and then it will talk about uh, short meta descriptions on three pages. So it's too short. Some are too short, some are duplicates. So it will give you kind of a roadmap. And uh, here's one thing um, that I've seen many, many people. We, When we do, the first thing we do with a client is we'll do a website analysis on them before we even do their on-page SEO or, or, and then start their off-page SEO. And then we have to go in and fix their on-page SEO. And one of the biggest mistakes I see people make is they don't even – they have a site map. Some don't, but some do. They create it with Yoast or some other plugin, which is free, and, you know, you get what you pay for. Um so they uh, they create the site map, but they don't actually submit it to Google. So Google doesn't has they're not even indexing them, or they're indexing them, but it's so incomplete. So when you create your site map, <laughs> please make sure you are submitting it in, in, into uh, you know your Google Analytics and, and your uh, Webmaster tools. Uh, if you don't know how to do that, you know it's really you know just get somebody who does. You know this. Being doing SEO, I mean, this is a, a job in and of itself because things are constantly changing. So if you're spending 20 hours a month on this type of uh, activities, that's 20 hours a month you could be focusing on what you're really an expert at and actually makes you money, correct? So it all comes down to the uh, opportunity of money, but that's a whole nother segment. All right, so uh, what we want to talk about is Webmaster Tools, okay? Resolve any errors in Webmaster Tools. That's tip number two. Now, here's your action step, okay? This is not something to ignore. When they give you, and, and I get emails from Webmaster Tools, and they'll tell me for one of my clients or me or whatever that, you know, there's an issue or there's a, you know, a site or whatever it is, and it's, you know, it, as long as you just click on it, it will take you there and you can resolve them. 
for, but I would suggest before that just check if there were any error, errors inside your webmaster tools and resolve them as soon as possible. So whether or not you've received a notice, I would actually go in there, fix anything that's there, uh, and that way there you're starting fresh and going forward, look out for your notices and keep everything updated. But, you know, go in there and make sure everything is good right now as it is. Number three, review content that's not ranking. What about content you've written recently and it's not ranking. Perhaps you thought that you would get a ton of links and you could rank in Google for a competitive term, but that just didn't happen. Well, maybe you could go back and tweak the post and try to rank for different keywords, or you could write a guest post on a high-profile site and link to this content, or add links from an existing content to on your website. So, Here's an action step for this one to review. Number three, review content that is not ranking. Here's your action step. On a monthly basis, review your recent post to see what traffic they're getting. If they're getting very little traffic, take some action to create this. Don't always just think about new posts. It's uh, let's not neglect our old posts either. And adding and updating to a new post gives it, you know, fresher content. You know, I, I know some companies, and it's very rare, but, you know, and they are ranking way up there, and they have, like, I don't know, seven or ten blogs. That's it. But they'll go back in there, and, and they'll just keep updating them so it's coming. But they only have, like, seven or ten. It's kind of amazing. It's very rare that uh, somebody has done it like that. That's why it stands out in my mind. But, uh uh-uh. So there's multiple ways you can achieve that. So number four, consider relevant keywords. Oftentimes people, when they go to to Google or or any of the other search engines, they don't know the solution. All they know is what their problem is, right? So they're not going to type in exactly who or what can provide them with their solution. So they're going to ask a question, what is, how to, or... um, so let's say we're going to talk about social media. So it might be social media sites, social media definitions, type of social media, social media jobs, history of social media, social media strategy, uh, social media examples, social media for business, social media for small business, how social media can, uh, how small businesses can use social media. So there's all different types of keywords that you could use, and uh, we'll talk about <coughs> focusing on long T keywords too. But so can consider related keywords. When you write a blog post and try to optimize for a keywords, it's great when you start to get regular ongoing traffic for those keywords. But what also normally happens is that you end up getting even more traffic for keywords that are similar to the ones you try to rank for. So it's important to consider these relevant keywords in your posts. And I'm not talking about adding keywords for the sake of it, but Google thinks that that they are related to your main uh, keyword targets. Then consider adding them as long as is, is there as long as it's relevant and it's natural, right? You don't want to be, you know, just throwing keywords in there, short or long tail. Make sure it's just natural. Uh, you know, it fits within what you're saying, okay, and it adds value to your content. You know, just keep it real, but use different phrases. Use the same words in different phrases, okay? The best way to find these keywords is by searching for something in Google and scrolling down to the bottom of the page, and you'll see it'll give you a bunch of related searches or a bunch of related keyword terms. So it's not hard. Just go to Google and type in whatever it is that you're going to write your article about and uh, type it in and, and just look and see what uh, other people are using, right? And then um, so your action step here is consider related keywords as part of your post, all right? Number five, tip number five, leverage tools to help with SEO. This is kind of a, a big one. But uh, remember, the tools, if you don't know how to use them, the tools won't help you as much as if you do. And, you know, I'm telling you, you know, if you have, if you are a coach, right, or, or, you know, you sell houses, 
and you know you have a coach and your average course or your average client is you know seven thousand dollars for a year right you know whatever they buy and they buy some something more something less let's just say it's seven thousand dollars right if you're spending 20 hours a month on your SEO, whatever you're producing is inferior to what somebody else who's trained could probably do in five hours where you could pay them, right? So now if you're paying somebody three or four or 500 bucks to do your SEO, that frees up 20 hours of your, of your month, right? At least and gives you a better product and better results. So what could you do with that other 15 hours? or the other 20 hours, rather, right? That is, uh, you know, 20 hours. You're telling me you couldn't speak to, you know, 25 or 30 clients? And, and if you have a 20% close rate, which is pretty bad, but if, that, if you have a 20% close rate and you're talking to 30 clients, it's six new clients, and if, and if your rate is 7000 that's $42,000. So should you be paying somebody Three, four, five, six hundred bucks to do this to have the possibility to make forty-two grand. So, and if you do it yourself, did you save five or six hundred bucks, or did you lose forty-two grand? So, it, it really comes down to, you know, understanding, uh, you know, getting your mind right. So, tip number five: leverage to help with SEO. There are many tools that can help you with different aspects of optimizing your content, so you really need to have a small collection of them. Here are some examples of tools uh, that, mo- that some people use on a regular basis. One is SEM Rush. This shows the terms your competitor is ranking for, what you are ranking for, and helps you with keyword research and much more. Google Keyword Planner. When you want to do re- keyword research, this is essential to review. Google will give you an estimate of traffic for the keywords you search for and for associate, uh, associated keywords. Yoast SEO plugin. If you're on WordPress, you could use this plugin. It is a, a plugin for optimizing your content on Google. It simply uses it's simple to use and it's very effective. But please keep in mind that um, all these plugins you can use them, but you still have to know how to use them. You still have to take the time and effort. And a lot of them will just give you an outline, you know, of like what is needed. You still have to have that skill set to do that. On-site explorer is another one. It's important to understand about the proprietary uh, websites and web ranking systems implemented by Moz. Your website is ranked out of 100 using the domain authority ranking, and your pages are ranked also out of 100. This tool shows you shows you this data so that you can consider it when trying to compete against other websites. And then, the, and then you have Ma, Moz Toolbar. When you do a Google search, this toolbar adds the domain and page authority onto each search result. Considering using two browsers, one for normal searches and one for the Moz toolbar that you install, uh, you can use this one when you're doing uh, searches for your SEO-related work. And then here's one I have a hard time pronouncing, but it's Ahrefs, A-H-R-E-F-S. And I'll primarily use this for analyzing the link profiles of our site and that of our competitors. So it's kind of it's good to use for a link, okay? So those are different sites that you can use, SEM Rush, Google Keyword Planner, Yoast Plugin, On-Site Explorer, Domain Authority Ranking, Moz Toolbar, and AREFs. Those are sites that you can consider using, but keep in mind, uh, you still have to have the skill set to understand how to use them effectively, what they're telling you, and then how to implement whatever it is they're telling you. Uh, six, strategic guest posting. If you have a post that is ranking well and getting some traffic, this may be a post that you want to keep uh, topping up with new links. The new links to this post will help it maintain its standing in Google's uh, search results, but you may also, uh, but it may also push you up in the search results if it's not currently in the number one position. 
One way of doing this is through guest posts. Write an article that is relevant to the content you have and includes a link to the article you want to promote. This helps drive traffic to the post, but it will also help with the ranking of the post because the link is relevant and adds value to the content that you are uh, guest posting about. You'll generally get away with adding the link. So action. Read this post. Uh, read about guest posting and make sure you're you're doing it strategically. You know, you're not just posting articles uh, on directories and, you know, with a link back to your site uh, because that was, you know, Google loves backlinks. Their votes of confidence is, but about 18, 20 months ago, they changed the types of backlinks that they gave credit to. So uh, just, you know, be careful and make sure you're not uh, using them from uh, servers or, or companies that are offshore and, you know, they're just, crap directories and stuff, okay? And then here's some, uh, number seven and final one is about writing long content. Uh, it is really about optimizing content for SEO. Uh, so, yes, absolutely. So why write long content? If you can write super high-quality short articles, then write them. But typically, it's very difficult to provide a lot of value in a short article. So, they don't tend to get many links or shares. Without these, you won't have much chance of getting ranked for this content. Shares and likes, you know, these are things that you have to have. So I, I recently read a post from uh, uh, Andy Castadina on the importance of length of blog posts, tweets, Facebook updates, etc. And his article, he represents research on the average content length of the searches in the top 100, and um, most of them are over a thousand words. Uh, so that's something to consider. So if you can really be concise and add value in a short post. Go ahead. People doesn't, most people don't have a lot of time to read, nor do they have a lot of a long attention span. But in terms of the search engines, uh, you know, if you can, the deeper you go, the more value you add. Uh, you know, the higher your chances are of getting ranked, and, and maybe you could have your cake and eat it, too, by doing a synopsis on the top, you know, one or two paragraphs about what this all, this whole article is going to tell you. Uh, and so people can basically get the whole summary uh, right up front and, um, you know, then read through the sections that they want. So in summary, SEO tips and methods are not about scamming Google. Don't do that. You, you'll lose. You know what I mean? Play in the rules. And when you stick to the rules, you'll be rewarded greatly. And, you know, the people who are doing the spammy stuff, they're the ones who are going to get uh, bounced back. You know, you stick to doing it right. Uh, you don't want to over-optimize your content, but some optimization is required, and this is ongoing work that you need. However, quality content is the, is the best starting point. Never, ever deliver any piece of content on any site unless it's high quality. And never write articles for websites that are not high quality. Check to make sure that they have a good domain rank. And even though Google, you know, it's, they may or may not use domain rank anymore as, as an indicator, but, you know, you still want to make sure that you're not posting an article uh, yourself. I mean, if somebody shares it, you know, you've got no control over that. But if you're doing guest blogging or posting, just make sure that you're not doing it on a, a, a scammy site or a site that's been blacklisted or something. But anyhow, so those are seven tips. And, uh, again, if you want to talk to me about these tips or how I might be able to help you or my team, uh, feel free to reach out to me at ron at rcsonlinesolutions.com. And you've been listening to... Uh, the Internet Marketing and Business Solutions Radio Show with Ron Cooming of RCS Online Solutions, where we help business owners and entrepreneurs achieve even greater success by attracting, converting, and retaining their ideal customers and clients to achieve even greater success. Stay tuned for Part 2 coming up in a couple of minutes where we talk about uh, the secret guide to video and SEO. <laughs> 